Hi everybody. Today we are going to talk about thyroid health and the six root cause factors that are often underlying triggers for thyroid disorder. So um, whether you actually whether you have um, hyperthyroid or hypothyroid, these factors can be helpful for you because when obviously hyperthyroid is a overreactivity, there's too much thyroid hormone being created, um, and hypothyroid is not enough thyroid hormone being created. But either way, the body is probably been burdened by other factors that could cause the thyroid to stop regulating appropriately. Okay, so obviously with hyperthyroidism, there would be a couple of different things that we would want to assess, but know that these underlying factors can also contribute to the development of dis-ease or imbalance in the thyroid system as well, whether you're hyper or hypo. But what I'm going to talk about today is I'm going to focus on hypothyroidism because that's much more prevalent, um, but know again, these factors can be applicable to you if you deal with hyperthyroid. Okay, so the, there's six core factors to thyroid disorder. So if you're just popping on, say hello, let me know where you're coming in from. If you deal with thyroid stuff, put a one up in the put a one up in the comments, or if you know somebody that deals with thyroid stuff, go ahead and throw a one up in the comments. You'll be shocked to realize that like 20 million Americans are dealing with thyroid disorders, and the, the statistic is crazy. It's like one in eight women will end up with a thyroid disorder in their lifetime, so it's very, very prevalent. In fact, if you know somebody that's dealing with thyroid issues and looking at some alternative ways looking at some alternative perspectives on their thyroid health. Maybe consider sharing this video with them. Or if you have a lot of people that you know that deal with thyroid stuff, you can share this video on your Facebook page, maybe tag them as well in the comment section so that they can maybe get a new perspective on what could be going on, what could be contributing to their thyroid issues. Okay, so I actually love to talk about thyroid stuff. I think it's one of the most um, misunderstood imbalances in the body. If you go to a conventional doctor and you tell them you they find that you have thyroid issues, number one, they're going to probably put you on a synthetic hormone replacement therapy. Synthroid is what most people end up on. Um, and those are synthroid or level thyroxine. Those are both T4 hormone replacement therapies, which only will support and really fix um, a very small portion of people. But even if you do get results, with that synthetic thyroid, unfortunately, thyroid hormone, unfortunately, no one's looking at the root cause of what's triggered that hypothyroid issue. And then those causative factors can actually, if left unaddressed, can contribute to the development of other issues down the line. So why not just work at the root cause and, and help your body recalibrate? Because if you can find the root cause, you can help your body not just handle thyroid, but be overall more healthy and more capable of, of achieving day-to-day -day vitality. Hey, Andrea, thanks so much for joining. Yes, yeah, so adrenal fatigue is a big issue. In fact, adrenal fatigue often accompanies thyroid issues. Um, it Not always, but often does. And so some of this information will actually be relative to you as well. Okay, so let's get started. The first two factors I refer to out of the six of, for thyroid disorders are what I call, call core factors, meaning these issues affect the thyroid directly. You'd be surprised that actually most thyroid issues are, are due to imbalance happening outside of the thyroid itself, and I'll get to that in a minute. So the six core factors, the first two is number one, nutritional deficiency, and number two, autoimmune challenge, okay? And now that we're going to cover some of this stuff in, in, um, today, but I've also written a thyroid ebook that you can download for free right now. It's, it'll get released, I believe, tomorrow. You can download and access that for free with a lot of this stuff kind of going a little bit deeper. Um, but so the first factor is nutritional deficiency. The second factor is autoimmune. Those are the two core. And the additional four causative factors are liver overwhelm, estrogen imbalance, gut imbalance, and then stress overwhelm, which is going to actually play a large part in adrenal fatigue as well, Andrea. Um, okay, so the first factor nutritional and uh, nutritional deficiency. Your thyroid, of course, requires specific building blocks to be able to create thyroid hormone. And those nutritional building blocks are vitamins and minerals. And the three that the thyroid requires are iodine, zinc, and selenium. And the iodine is the building block, like the largest building block for thyroid hormone. If you don't have adequate amounts of iodine in your diet, or your thyroid is incapable of absorbing adequate amounts of iodine, 
then you're not going to have enough building block and you're automatically not going to be able to make enough thyroid hormone. Now, a lot of people have iodine deficiency in their thyroid because there's a little bit of a halide toxicity in their body. Halides is this family of, of, um, of, of um, atoms that all act the same. So iodine, fluorine, fluoride, bromide, chloride, all of those things are part of the halide family. And if you have too much bromide, if you have too much chloride, and if you have too much fluoride in your body, you can displace iodine because those have a heavier affinity for the iodine receptor site because they're stronger molecules than iodine is. Hey, hey, Sophia. Oh, thank you, love. You're so sweet. I know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited to be putting you out. Okay, so if you have halide toxicity, it could be causing an inappropriate or lack or inhibiting proper absorption of iodine in the thyroid. Ways to get rid of extra halides in your system would be to do like a fat soluble chlorophyll. You could drink citrus water in your day, in your um, water every day. Uh, citrus essential oil helps to detoxify halides from the body. Um, I also really like chlorophyll, so get your hands on some good chlorophyll. Um, and as you start to cleanse the system of those halides, your body will have the capacity to go in and absorb the iodine more efficiently once you get into the thyroid, flooding your thyroid with the building blocks that it needs to make the adequate amounts of hormone. Um, also, there's selenium. Selenium is another necessary nutrient that the thyroid requires to be able to create thyroid hormone. In fact, it's really, it's required for iodine to turn into iodine in the thyroid. And the iodine is the form that your body uses to make that hormone that we just, to make the thyroid hormone. So selenium helps convert iodide into iodine, and then you have the proper building blocks. So if you don't have enough selenium, you have just iodide, and you can't have the proper um, form of iodine to be able to make the hormone. Now, selenium also is really critical because as the body does that conversion from iodide to iodine, there's a natural process of free radical release that happens. Selenium acts as a natural antioxidant to help to neutralize some of that free radical damage, some of the free radicals that could potentially go in and damage the thyroid. So lack of selenium is actually associated with the triggering of autoimmune response because if you don't have enough selenium in there to protect the thyroid, it makes you more vulnerable to creating an autoimmune response against the thyroid. Okay, so selenium is really important there. This is why selenium is really helpful if you have autoimmune thyroid, whether you have a selenium deficiency or not, because it also has the capacity to go in and protect the thyroid from too much free radical damage. Now, the third nutrient that's required for proper thyroid hormone output is zinc. So zinc is also responsible for helping that process of um, the creation of T4 into T3 in the thyroid. So your thyroid hormone creates two types of hormone, two types of thyroid hormone. Number one is inactive, which we call T4, or T4 is kind of called inactive thyroid hormone. It's a lot less reactive. And then T3, which is the, the active thyroid hormone, okay? So zinc is required to help T4 get converted into T3 in the thyroid. All right, now interestingly enough, the thyroid itself only creates about 90%, only it creates about 10% hormone in its active form. Only about 10% of what's created in the thyroid is in the form of T3. Now then about 90% of the thyroid hormone, the rest of that hormone output is inactive or T4. So you can imagine why a lot of hypothyroid issues are actually not happening as a result of something being wrong in the thyroid, but a result of being something wrong with the conversion that happens outside of the thyroid so that 90% of that T4 can get converted into T3. And that happens in outside tissues. That happens in the liver primarily, it happens in the gut, it happens in the kidneys. So if there's overwhelm or imbalance in any of those, those organs, your system's going to be much less efficient at creating high active thyroid hormone. And if that's an issue, you could be developing symptoms of hypothyroid. So I'm not going to get too deep into the, um, into the rest of this stuff because I know this could be like a really long, long um, Facebook Live, but I am going to just briefly finish out talking about the other five factors. So the second factor is autoimmunity. Now this also is going to affect the thyroid directly. So if you have autoimmune issue, meaning your body is now said, oh my gosh, there's something foreign in the thyroid, it's going to go after your thyroid kind of actually attacking it. Now you could have an autoimmune tag against either thyroperoxidase and, um, <clears throat> enzyme, which is an enzyme required to help your body create hormone, 
or you could have a antibody against the um, cyro um, cyroglobu um, well, cyro TPO and then thyroglobulin antibody. You can also have an autoimmune tag against that protein, thyroglobulin, okay? That protein is, is actually thyroid tissue. So you may have an autoimmune tag against either the thyroid tissue itself or the enzyme in the thyroid that's required to make thyroid hormone. Now know this, your doctor probably won't look for autoimmune thyroid in a regular annual checkup. You have to actually ask them. And when you ask them, make sure you ask for both the anti-TPO antibody and the thyroglobulin antibody or TGA antibody. There are a lot of practitioners that will only run one of the two, and that could mean that you are missing identifying one potential, one of the other potential autoimmune presentations. So make sure that they're looking into that. <clears throat> because if you have an autoimmune thyroid issue, of course, you're going to always have to be on be chasing the autoimmune, or you're going to always be chasing the hypothyroid symptoms because the issue is really that you have an autoimmune response at the thyroid level, so affecting that directly. The other four factors um, take place outside of the thyroid, okay? So if there's liver overwhelm, you could end up with hypothyroid issues. If you end up with gut um, imbalance, you could end up with hypothyroid issues. So those two are directly connected to low thyroid because the liver is responsible for converting 60%, 90% of what's released by the thyroid is inactive. Of that 90%, 60% of that inactive thyroid hormone gets converted to its active form in the liver. Okay, so if the liver's overwhelmed, it might not be as efficient in doing that conversion appropriately or as efficiently as you're meant to do. Now, of that 90% of T4, that inactive thyroid hormone that's coming from the thyroid, about 20% gets converted in the digestive tract. Okay, so if by good bacteria in there. So if you have dysbiosis or imbalance in the gut, surprise, surprise, another hormonal imbalance, thyroid imbalance, can manifest. Yesterday we talked about how an imbalance in the digestive tract is now known to affect your estrogen metabolism. So it's also going to affect your ability to create active thyroid hormone. So the good bacteria in the gut create a byproduct, and that byproduct is what helps to convert the T4 into T3. <coughs> and that takes place literally in the digestive tract. Now the um, now we're at factor four. The fourth thing, one, two, yeah, the fourth factor, wait, nutrition, autoimmune, liver, gut, estrogen. Estrogen is, a, is a, the fifth factor. If you have estrogen dominance issues, too much estrogen happening in your body, you can create an, your body will create an excess of thyroid binding globulin. That's actually a protein that goes around and binds up with thyroid. It makes it, um, it binds it up so it's not active anymore. Um, ah, Danielle, thanks. My sweater is from Vici. You can check them out on Instagram. V-I-C-I, Vici. <laughs> I shop there a lot. <laughs> okay, anyways. Um, so if you have too much estrogen, you're going to have an increase in thyrobinding globulin, and that can actually make it more difficult for your body to have adequate amounts of circulating active thyroid hormone to go around and yoke up with cells and help the cells do what they're meant to do, okay? So too much estrogen. If you need a review on how to detox extra estrogen from your body, look for the day 12 Facebook Live that I did, okay, on estrogen dominance. I give you a lot of good tips in there. And then the final factor of the six is stress, okay? So Andrea had mentioned adrenal fatigue. I'm actually going to have to do a Facebook Live on adrenal fatigue in and of itself. It deserves its own, actually, series of, of, um, of Facebook Lives. Maybe I'll consider doing that. Um, okay, but when you have too much stress going on in your body, your system responds by creating excess amounts of cortisol, Okay, cortisol, and then also it can release um, epinephrine and norepinephrine. Those are adrenaline hormones over the initial short period of time. But, and, but long term, when there's too much cortisol, your body actually compensates by creating an increase in what's called reverse T3 hormone. So RT3, reverse active thyroid hormone. That reverse T3 goes around and it neutralizes active thyroid hormone. And it's actually a compensatory mechanism. It's not meant to put your body into hypothyroid um, in terms of chronic, in, in, chronic in, a, in a chronic way. But the reverse T3, it's good because it actually helps your body, it prevents it from going into like 
combustion, spontaneous combustion, like too much T3 plus too much cortisol over an extended period of time can really, really cause some terrible side, some terrible health effects. And so what's good about that is it helps to, you know, prevent your body from going into extreme physical burnout, although that will happen over an extended period of time regardless with too much stress. But reverse T3 over time, of course, is going to cause hypothyroidism. And so you have to be able to manage stress appropriately. You can review some of those stress factors um, on some of the Facebook Lives that we did with anything that's listed stress in the in the title, we talked about ways to manage stress. So things like walking, getting outside, more time for play. You can bring in adaptogens as well. Um, I like to use uh, Romania, ashwagandha to nourish the thyroid, help to uh, calm that cortisol. Um, also, you can do things like essential oils to help your body better handle cortisol. Things like lavender can do that. Um, ylang ylang, cedar wood, vetiver, those are all very calming. But you've got to get the stress under control. Now, stress might not be emotional stress. It might be physical stress. And your body can also have that same hormonal response, elevating cortisol, when you have these physiological stressors like chemicals, heavy metals, and um, immune system um, over overwhelm or imbalance, things like viral excess, um, chronic viral infections, fungal infections, bacterial infections, and even parasitic infections can cause your body to get into this long-term state of stress. And that can cause an increase in reverse T3 and trigger hypothyroid symptoms because now you don't have adequate amounts of T3 circulating. Now, what's so interesting to think is that the first two factors that we talked about originate in the thyroid, okay? The second two factors that we talked about, the liver and the gut, those are affecting the conversion of inactive to active thyroid hormone in the liver and the, and the digestive system. So then there could be potentially be an issue, we're saying, at the thyroid or in the conversion or, organs. Now, the, the final two factors that we talked about, estrogen dominance and stress overwhelm, is taking place outside of those organs completely, right? We see an increase in thyroid binding globulin. We see an increase in reverse T3, both rendering the body D T3 or active thyroid hormone deficient. That's taking place outside of those organs completely. And the biggest mistake that's happening in conventional medicine, the way that thyroid issues are being handled, is they're just looking at T4. And there's all these other potential root causes that are throwing off the, physi the physiology. And you can actually look into all of this. You can get an analysis done um, and see where along, look at the levels that you're, that, look at your thyroid levels and you can associate where along this thyroid hormone pathway is your unique deficiency. And then by honing in on that, you can actually create your own unique thyroid support, right? Okay, so if you want to identify, you know, what thyroid type you are, you can go ahead, go to my Instagram, look for, there's an image of, like, there's an image with a hand holding a notepad, it says thyroid lap, thi um, thyroid panel. You can get those 10 factors from there. You get the, the 10 lab values that you want to analyze. Or, you know, you can look for my ebook release, it'll probably happen tomorrow or Wednesday, so this is the week of Thanksgiving, so November 21st or November 22nd. I'll post the link in here when it goes live, you can download it and actually have a thyroid type quiz in the back of that ebook for free. Okay, the whole thing is free. Just get it, and you can figure it out if you deal with thyroid issues. All right. So if you have questions about this stuff, I'll be checking this thread throughout the day. I'm happy to support you. If you have more specific thyroid questions, post in the comment section. I'll be sure to maybe do an additional Facebook Live to clarify some of this stuff. Or, and also, if you liked this video and you feel like it could serve others, be sure to click share and share the information with them. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of understanding and a new perspective on the knowledge that they may or may not have already been introduced to, to spark a little bit of hope and intrigue that will kind of open the mind to try something new in case they've been feeling stuck with their thyroid issues. Thank you so much for tuning in today, and I look forward to checking back with you guys with another upcoming Facebook Live. Talk to you later.